or PAM for short. Privileged account management in both on-premise and cloud environments is a high priority for any organization that has committed to security. SANS uh, lists it as one of their cr critical security controls. NIST has several control requirements associated with it, and the Cloud Security Alliance designates an entire domain to privileged account management. To start, what exactly is a privileged account? Well, we need some formal definitions here to make sure that we're clear on this. I'll take my definition from the National Information Assur Assurance Glossary, CNSSI 409. Specific, specific enough for you? A privileged user is, according to this definition, and I quote, authorized and therefore trusted to perform security relevant functions that ordinary users are not authorized to perform, unquote. I guess that means that if you're a privileged user, you're also extraordinary and not merely ordinary. But note the all-important qualifier, security relevant. What does that mean? We need clarity on that term. So NIST again comes to the rescue and gives us a definition. Quote, security relevant information includes filtering rules for routers or firewalls, cryptographic key management information, configuration parameters for security services, and access control lists, which can include both firewalls or lists of permissions for users on a server. So the potential for abuse, if you're a privileged user, is fairly self-evident. So there's some important safeguards associated with privileged account management. We'll take a look at each one in turn. Just very quickly, I'll give you the overview. These will be separation of duties, also called segregation of duties or SOD, non-repudiation, which is the denial of the ability to or, or, to deny. Uh, that is, non-repudiation is the inability to credibly deny that you've done something wrong, either by mistake or on purpose. Least privilege, which is the minimum amount of rights that you need to do your job. Insider threat protection, which is protecting against people who are using these privileged accounts to do bad things, and key management, which is a whole separate area of inquiry in and of itself, but we'll just take a quick look at it here. So first, separation of duties. You may have seen some old-time spy movies where the villain tries to launch a nuclear missile using a special key, but they can't do it because they need the other key, which only James Bond or the good guys uh, have. Separation of duties simply means that you have two people that need to coll collude to, in order to do something. And if they, that can still happen, but at least it raise a, raises a barrier. James Bond and Goldfinger are not likely to act together in concert. But it can still happen, but at least it gives you a, another tripwire. Um, <clears throat> so in the real world, though, separation of duties largely involves administrative responsibilities. For instance, someone who's monitoring access logs shouldn't have access to the logs themselves and the ability to change them or delete them, and vice versa. The person that, uh, that actually sets up the logs may not, shouldn't be able to, to monitor them necessarily. Separation of duties is a requisite control in the NIST suite of controls for uh, computer security in the infamous 800-53 documentation. And it appears there both as its own base control, as it's called, and also as essential elements and other controls in configuration management. Second major item here is non-repudiation, which as I said is the protection of against a user's denying that they've either made a mistake or done something wrong. You can attribute that action to them and you have proof that it was they and only they that did that. <coughs> Viable non-repudiation depends on associating a user's identity with any action. If for instance, if you have an administrative account, but you allow three, four, five 
whatever number of users to all use that account to do things because it's convenient. You don't have to give them each their own account. They just all share that account. Well, you may have achieved convenience, but then when something goes wrong, somebody did something with that account that shouldn't have been done, who did it? Was it Steve? Was it Paul? Was it Julie? Uh, you, you can't show either way. There may be times when they really don't think that they made a mistake and are not lying, but um, you, you, can't, you can't show that. And of course, in a worse situation, they may have done something wrong on purpose, stolen data, exfiltrated data, and give it to someone that shouldn't have it, etc. So, <coughs> again, the NIST 853 control set explicitly requires non-repudiation for so-called high-impact systems, but it's important to keep in mind for moderate and low-impact systems as well. Third aspect of privileged account management is to think about least privilege. Least privilege is central to any security program and it's the principle of ensuring that a user only has those privileges that they really need to do their job. That can sometimes be a matter of judgment rather than something that you implement concretely or explicitly with security. So reviewing that and auditing that can be a little bit difficult. Do they really need to be able to do that or not? For instance, the backup administrator should only be able to perform the backups and the restores should they be able to see the data that they're backing up and restoring. Maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe they need to see it to, to verify that the backups and restores are working properly, or maybe it's more important to deny them access to the data. They just run the, the operations that do those backups and assume that it works okay, or have other means besides looking at the data to verify that it, that it works properly. Fourth element in privileged account management is insider threat protection. If your privileged account management program or uh, set of controls is deficient, then insider threat grows as a, as a possibility, as a, as a potential um, in likelihood and in scope. Insiders, by definition, have easy access, easier access to data than the outsiders. And if they have excessive or unmanaged privileges, then they're in a position to do enormous damage to the organization. Perhaps the most infamous or famous, depending on your perspective. Uh, example of this is Edward Snowden, who was an insider who, as we all know, exfiltrated a lot of data and exposed it to the public. The NIST requirements, again, include insider threat controls, but, uh, but they're not explicitly mentioned as separate controls. They're generally an ancillary or secondary benefit to other controls, but it's something you want to think about in terms of your privileged account management outlook. Finally, key management is very important. Key, encryption keys are necessary to decrypt and see data that's been encrypted. And key management, as I mentioned earlier, is a whole separate topic all on its own. We probably are going to do three or four videos just on key management. But privileged users will have access to those keys. And if you have access to the keys, then of course you have access to the data as well. So your privileged account management system is only good as your key management system. Whoever has access to the keys has access to the data. And one element of this that is sometimes overlooked is having access to the keys also means that you can destroy them. And if you destroy an encryption key, you've lost your data. And that's not a good situation. So uh, we won't delve too deeply into key management here, but suffice to say that it is something to consider when uh, speaking or thinking about privileged account management. The question, of course, is how to implement privileged account management and all of these associated sa safeguards in a cost-effective manner. So let's take a quick o tour of some of the offerings that DLT has uh, for privileged account management or associated safeguards. Amazon AWS, Amazon Web Services. They have a wealth of PAM and PAM related services such as uh, identity and access management. They've got AWS CloudTrail for, and for mobile devices, uh, Cognito. They also have their own key management service and a, har <coughs> and a hardware device called HSM designed express expressly for key management. 
BLT carries Beyond Trust Power Broker, which specifically addresses uh, uh, privileged account management, both for on-premise and cloud environments. And they also have a password safe for managing privileged accounts and uh, SSH keys, and a Power Broker server that manages privileged access uh, policies across Unix, Linux, Macintoshes, and through uh, Microsoft Active, Active Directory, Microsoft Active Directory. Dell has an identity and an access management uh, system that offers an array of features, including privileged account management and privileged, privileged delegation tracking, which is an interesting feature. You can track who's decided to give their privileges to someone else. Oracle has a very comprehensive identity governance system that seamlessly manages privileged accounts uh, in an Oracle environment. They've also got a key manager, a key management appliance, and a key vault, which all provide uh, very robust key management capabilities. Finally, we've got Symantec, and their data insight and DLP products contribute to PAM. They're not PAM products specifically, but they help to track who has access to data, where the data is stored, and where that data is going. So. Privileged access management is an important element of security.